you know you can move air using just electricity? I don't mean just light it up, but push it around as well. That invisible shockwave you've just seen was created by applying an extremely high voltage between two sharp metal points. You see, when we apply a high voltage across air, it stops being an insulator and starts to break down, at which point we call it plasma. And once in the plasma state, we can do some really cool tricks, and one of my personal favourites is to create propulsion. But there's been a long history of people creating plasma propulsion device, and in this video I want to show you three simple ways you can create your own plasma propulsion device using off-the-shelf equipment. So, let's dive into it. The first plasma propulsion device we're going to build is electric arc discharge. Here's what you're going to need. Some electrodes and terminal block, high voltage transformer, the transformer driver circuit, an AC-DC power supply and some various connecting wires and leads. We're going to reuse many of these components for other plasma types. For the electrodes you're going to need sharp points. The sharper the better. This increases the electric field making it easier to break down the air and generate more propulsion. Think of it a bit like putting your finger over a tap. The water speed increases as the hole size gets smaller. For long lasting electrodes we're going to need a hard metal that resists sputtering. Like TIG welding rods, found at any welding supply store. To sharpen I just put in my drill and use on a bench grinder. It only takes a few seconds. And this creates a nice clean sharp point. Next is the high voltage transformer, often called a flyback transformer. Now we can build our own using ferrite core and two coils of wire. The flyback boosts our low DC supply to thousands of volts AC, enough to break down air and form a plasma. You'll find flyback transformers in everything ranging from plasma globes, car ignition coils, old CRT TVs. The one I'm using today is super reliable. I'll put a link in the description for anyone interested. Now to generate a high voltage we need to rapidly pulse the flyback transformer's primary side on and off several thousand times a second. A common way to do this is to use a 555 timer. But for more power I designed a full bridge driver circuit. I can go into more details on how I designed this, just let me know in the comments down below. Now with all the parts assembled it's time to hook everything up. I connect my tungsten electrodes to the flyback using terminal block. Then I connect the flyback primary to the driver PCB. And finally I connect my AC-DC power supply. Now experimenting with high voltage can be great fun, but it can also be extremely dangerous from the risk of shocks, burns and fire. In addition some of the plasmas generate quite an amount of ozone which can be damaging to your lungs. So if you haven't done this kind of work before, find someone who has to help. But also remember to stay away from any high voltage contact points. And even when they're powered off, some of the high voltage capacitors can store enough energy to give you quite a shock. Now with everything connected up, it's time to power everything up. So you're going to need to adjust the potentiometers on the PCB until the arc ignites. This usually happens around the resonant frequency of the transformer, which is typically about 20 kilohertz. To visualize the shockwave, I'm using a Schlieren setup which allows us to see tiny airflow changes with lights and mirrors. To truly see the action, I modulated the driver circuit and captured it with a high speed camera. So you can watch how the shock waves grow and collapse as each plasma is ignited. Now you can experiment with different electrode shapes and sizes. Here I'm using a point to mesh and you can see the air moving through the mesh. And here is a point to solid plate. You can see the air bouncing off the plate. I think the Schlieren setup is a great way to get a feel for what the plasma is actually doing, allowing us to design better plasma propulsion devices. Once you've mastered electric arc discharge, the next type of plasma we're going to look at is the Single Dielectric Barrier Discharge, or SDBD for short. It is a little bit more complex, and it's been used in everything from aircraft wings and or rocket engines to reduce turbulence. This one uses two copper electrodes fixed to opposite side of a high voltage insulator. Here I'm using Perspex, but pretty much any other insulator will work, such as glass and nylon. I'm using adhesive copper tape for the electrodes. You can find the links below, or you can even use slug repellent tape. You need to ensure that the electrodes are slightly offset from one another. Then solder the leads, which will connect to your flyback. The plasma forms around the top electrode, appearing as a faint blue glow. But be careful not to apply too much voltage, or your insulator will break down, forming an electric arc. Once we connect a high voltage source, we can see the shockwave been created from the top electrode. The shockwave sticks really close to the surface of the dielectric. Now the final type of plasma we're going to look at is the ionic wind or the corona discharge. This is a truly fascinating plasma which is used in everything from ionic wind lifters to laptop fans. Now the corona discharge needs an extremely high DC voltage. And I achieved this by adding a voltage multiplier to the output of my flyback transformer. 
This uses capacitors and diodes to multiply the AC voltage up to an extremely high DC voltage. I use a 3 quarter inch plumbing olive and I solder the lead to it. And for the emitter I splayed out a wire to create a kind of a brush effect or multiple pointed corona. There's a lot of research on optimizing ionic wind thrusters so let me know in the comments below if you want me to create a video on this. Hooking everything up we can see the flow of air from the splayed out wires travelling to the olive. You'll also see the occasional shock wave as the corona arcs across. And there you have it, a very quick introduction to the fascinating world of plasma propulsion combining plasma physics with high voltage electricity. If you enjoyed this electrifying journey remember to thumbs up and subscribe and let me know in the comments down below any high voltage experiments you'd like me to look at next. So as always stay 